Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. Uh, my name is MJ and this is It's Mudge, Losing It. Um, I chose the name It's Mudge, Losing It because my other channel is just called It's Mudge. Some people call me Mudge. <laughs> um, and I wanted something a little more separate from that. It's not a popular or big channel and there's not a lot on it. Um, just some like recordings of singing or something like that. Um, so I wanted something separate for this important stage of my life um, and for the information I wanted to share with you. Um, so I did not post last week because I was putting some thoughts down in a book that I made for me and my husband. It's a little goal book um, just about our weight goals and our journey and what we're going to be doing. Um, and I just kind of put down the information that I had on scrap papers around so far, including my questions for doctors, um, the diet I'm gonna be doing, things I want to remember, including what I wanted to talk about this week, which is five things not to do before surgery. And you may be thinking, MJ, you haven't had surgery yet. How would you know? I unfortunately, have had had a lot of surgeries in my life. I've had uh, tonsils, which is not a big one, but um, gallbladder taken out. I have had a lot of exploratory surgeries to do with my infertility. And I've also had many, 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 can't name any, can't, can't name enough uh, kidney stone removals, as well as two breast reductions. Um, two because the first doctor botched my surgery and the second doctor fixed it. So that was what was going on with those surgeries. Um, so I have had quite a few surgeries in my life and I wanted to share the things I've learned and also remind myself what I have learned because sometimes you forget. Uh, the first instance I did forget once and that one is don't wear a ponytail. Do not wear a ponytail. Uh, you're sitting there on this bed strapped down and you're laying on top of a very painful thing just sitting there on the back of your head and it's awful. It's horrible to wake up and have that splitting headache from a ponytail. You already have so many things going on from surgery. You do not, you do not need to deal with having a headache as well coming out of that surgery. Um, surgery, I mean, ponytail on top of your head would probably be okay, but don't wear one in the back of your head. It's not worth it. The next thing on my list is kind of obvious. It is stress. Don't stress. And I know that that one sounds obvious. It sounds very obvious and very dumb, but there are a few things you need to remember about stressing and a few things you can do to not stress. First of all, practice deep breathing. There in through the nose, out through the mouth kind of things. But also remember the most important thing is you're doing these surgeries, whatever surgery you're going through for your benefit, it's a good thing. Yes, there are things that can go bad during a surgery, but it's for your good. What's happening is for your good. And the many, many things that could go wrong, rarely, rarely do go wrong. So just remember that the doctors are doing this for your benefit. They are practiced. They know what they're doing. They are going to do this to help you. And so this surgery is not something to stress about. You don't need your blood pressure going up. I have gone in. We were running late. And so I was stressed because we were running late. And then I was more stressed because traffic and all the crazy drivers. And then when we got there, I literally ran in through the hospital and we ran up the stairs because we didn't want to wait for the elevator. And all these things caused me to have a really high um, blood pressure. So the doctors were like, ooh, I don't know, should we do this? And that was just, it was a dumb thing to do and it's not worth it to do. Don't let yourself stress. Don't get your blood pressure up over something like that. This is for your good. The doctors know what they're doing. You know what, what you're doing going in there. The doctors are giving you a plan. Stick to it, don't stress. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> the next thing is also kind of a duh. In fact, I wrote right next to it, duh. But don't eat, don't eat. Um, 
It's really important to remember not to eat because a lot of people, especially for this surgery, they think, oh crap, this is gonna be my last time I can eat ever again. It's not, you're gonna be able to eat. You just have to change the way you're eating. So yes, you won't be able to eat hamburgers that helped contribute to your weight gain much anymore, but that doesn't matter. You don't need to overload. The doctors have given us a plan and we've got to stick to it. I particularly this week, I'm doing liquids during the day and doing a keto meal at night. And then next week I'll be doing full liquids. Um, this is self-inflicted. My doctor is not required, but I want to be ready for that. These doctors, they're going into our stomachs. And if we have overloaded ourselves with food that our body hasn't been able to fully digest yet, that's messy. That's hard. They've got to try to squeeze our stomach out through a little tiny hole cut. And I've watched the videos of that. I've watched them pulling and tugging the stomach out. Don't make it harder on the doctors than it already is. They're trying to make it as easy as possible. So let's make it easy on the doctors. Don't eat before. I have a friend who runs every morning and after her jog, she eats a couple of M&Ms. She did that. She ate an M&M before she remembered, oh crap, I have surgery. I can't do that. The doctors, when she told them, they, you know, they always ask, have you eaten anything today? And she said, I had one M&M. And legitimately, they almost called off her surgery because of one M&M. Don't do it. It's not worth it. One M&M. Ugh, no. <laughs> the next thing on my list is do not fast from water. Don't do that one either, obviously. Um, water is important. I had uh, gotten pretty dehydrated before a surgery once because I had stopped at seven the night before and then I didn't end up getting to have my surgery till like four the next day I had stopped drinking anything and so I went in dehydrated the doctors say you can have liquids up to two hours before usually don't stop before that drink water in the morning if you're allowed to don't get dehydrated I ended up with so many pokes and needles everywhere because they were trying to find a spot to get my veins and I was so dehydrated they couldn't find good veins and I went home with like 20 pokes legitimately like 20 pokes it was horrible and it's not just bad nurses because they ended up bringing in the vein finding machine and everything and even that was having a hard time I already have deep veins it wasn't the nurse's fault it was my fault I dehydrated myself don't do it drink water up until the time uh, that your doctors have told you to, like I said, usually two hours before. The last thing is don't keep feeling sick to yourself. Now, if you're feeling sick because you're stressed, that's one thing, but if you're nauseous and you feel like you've got a fever, those kinds of things, you need to tell your doctor. A fever can be a sign of infection and we don't need that spreading to everything else in your body. The doctors don't want it spreading on all of their items either and creating an issue. If you're feeling sick, you make sure you're telling your doctor because that's really important for them to know. It will make the surgery easier. Yes, they may have to reschedule, but wouldn't you rather reschedule to a time that you're feeling better or you're not gonna make it worse for everybody, including yourself? Well, that is my list for today. There's only one other thing I wanted to share with you. Um, I'm really proud of myself. Yesterday was Sunday and I had the munchies because there's nothing to do on Sundays. I don't work, there's nothing distracting me. I get the munchies. So I made some low carb sugar, uh, sugar free, sorry, sugar free um, uh, ice cream for my husband, but I also made my first little bits of jello with the Gin Pro. Um, I learned don't pour your Gen Pro into the boiling liquid <laughs> because it turns into a hard sponge and it doesn't, it doesn't do anything good for you. It's awful. I had to throw away that water and that Gen Pro, which was a waste. Um, it was one scoop, but it was still a waste. Um, so I then mixed my Gen Pro into the cold liquid and then I put the Jello. um, I don't know, mix into the boiling liquid. And then once the, it was no longer boiling and mostly cooled down, that's when I poured in the Gen Pro um, cold liquids like you do in regular Jello. So I wanted to show you what I've done in my fridge because I distracted myself and I didn't eat extra yesterday. And I was very proud of myself. So this is my fridge. I have 
all of our water. I have our little jello that's set up really nice. Um, yogurts for this week and muscle milk um, protein shakes for later. Um, I got salads and everything in there because we've been eating keto in preparation for this. I've actually been keto for about a year now, um, which is how I lost the 30 pounds before surgery. Um, anyway, I was just really proud of myself finding a distraction so I don't get those munchies. And I plan on making tons of plans the day, the couple days before surgery so that I am not bored and getting hungry and nervous, making me more hungry. You know, you get those munchies and the stress hunger. Don't I, I don't want to have that. <laughs> so I have made those things and I plan on being ready and getting stuff ready the night before so that... I do not have any temptations. Um, anyway, thanks for watching my channel. Thanks for looking at the five things not to do before surgery. And if you're on a weightless journey, good luck. I'm excited for you. If you've already lost weight through your own practice or through surgery, please tell us about what you did. Please share, I wanna know. Um, thanks for watching and I hope y'all have a good day. Bye.